Grow me of the world. That's you. Unite. What's going down, you guys? So today I'm just going to be uh, breaking down the benefits of one of my new favorite soil conditioners that I'm going to be applying to my soil as soon as harvest is over. We're going to be putting this into our soil ASAP. So, uh, so behind me what I have is I have some biochar from uh, the company by Wakefield Biochar. So I'm just going to go over and talk to you guys a little bit about the benefits of it, why you would want to add it to your soil. If you, maybe you guys out there have never heard of biochar. You know, me personally, I heard about it when I first started getting into growing. But as you guys all know, when you're taking in so many, so much different stuff at one time, certain things kind of just getting forgotten about. Biochar was one of those, but uh, I recently just stumbled across it again. So I figured I would just share my experience with you guys. So let me give you a little history of biochar. So it's basically a carbon that you want to add to your soil and it's going to condition your soil. It's going to make your soil better than what it was without it. It's also going to, you know, lead to healthier soil equals healthier plants, as you guys already know. So when you apply a biochar, you're going to want to just mix it into the, the top four to six inches of your soil and just kind of mix it in really well and just work it in so it gets extremely uh, thoroughly mixed. And then you're just going to want to allow that to just sit, you know, let it, let it just sit and marinate in your soil, you know, like 30 days before you plan on planting in it and, you know, hit it with a nice compost tea or two and really get that biology uh, going. So what some of the benefits of it that you guys are going to notice is that it creates a colony for your microbial population to attach itself to. You know, uh, biochar is based off of basically like burnt up wood that's been crushed down and it's very porous and it allows your biology and your soil to attach itself to the actual carbon element itself. And if I show you guys, it's just like a very fine powder. You guys can see the consistency of it. It's just very powdery and it's kind of like charcoal. You know, and it, it, you kind of, have you ever picked up like barbecue charcoal? It's kind of, that's, that's, that's the consistency of it. So this is going to allow your plants to become more drought resistant. So it gets into your soil and it gives you a better water holding capacity. So say instead of having to water one to two times a week, maybe you're only having to water once a week because your soil is staying moist longer and it's not drying out as fast. So that's another added benefit. Uh, one of the things that I think is super cool about biochar is that it's a one application process. So it's not something that you guys are going to have to do year after year. It's a uh, one application at the appropriate amount is going to get you guys everything and all the benefits that biochar is going to bring to the table. So you, the benefits to be had will last for hundreds of years because as long as you're using a recyclable soil, it'll just stay in your soil and just keep on working and doing everything that it does. So that's another great benefit. It's sustainable, um, you know, and if you guys are environmentalists out there, you're helping reduce the carbon imprint, you know, reduce global warming because we're, we're taking the carbon that's been taken out of the atmosphere and we're putting it back into our soil. So anytime you can sequester carbon back into your soil, it's great for our plants and it's great for the environment as well. So, um, so as I kind of touch base on, it gives the, the soil biology in your guys' pots that you've been cultivating through compost teas, you know, and, and just keeping a healthy soil system with all the biology, the worms and everything else that's going on in there, the microscopic stuff. It's going to allow that something to attach itself to and create a home, you know, and the, the, the better that we can be um, just, you know, officiate the process of letting these plants do what they do. You know, we're just stewards of these plants. We're not growing plants. We're, we're growing a healthy soil and the soil is growing our plants. So we just have to be good stewards of the soil. And, you know, and, and biochar is 100% organic and natural. It's been used in farming practices around the world forever. And it's a tried and true thing that I think all of us could, uh, could benefit from, you know, myself included. And I can't wait to get this put into my soil at the end of harvest and then to see the benefits to be had, you know, in the, the first comable years. So it's, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, so if you guys are going to be adding biochar, a good recommendation uh, that I would say is going to be 5 to 10% of your soil volume. 
So for instance, I'm growing in 100 gallon pots, so I'm going to be adding one cubic foot of soil. It, it works out to about 1.3, but I'm just rounding it down to one for me personally. So for 100 gallons, I'll be adding one cubic foot to each bed. So I, uh, I have 15, well for, for my garden I need about 15 cubic feet. So I have 15 cubic feet of biochar. The rest of it is right over there. Uh, I brought out here just so you could see some biofar, biochar from Wakefield Biochar. And um, shout out to Wakefield Biochar by the way. You know, there if you guys Google what is some of the best biochar on the market and who makes it, these guys are gonna be in your top three companies. So you know they're making a good product. Um, and for me, you know, it's, it's roughly, you know, one cubic foot for my hundred gallon pots. So if that helps you guys out in any kind of a reference point, right on. Um, and then, like I said before, you just want to mix this into the, the first four to six inches of your soil. And when you guys want to do that is up to you. You can also pre-charge your biochar if you wanted to do that, like put it in a bucket and mix it in, you know, sprinkle some compost tea on it and let it sit for like 24 hours. Or you can just do what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to put it straight into the soil right after harvest, mix it in a real, real good to the first four to six inches of the soil. Maybe hit that soil with a compost tea to get the biology, you know, going and moving. And then from there, your biochar would just reap the benefits and do everything that it does. You won't really have to do anything else. Like I kind of already touched on, it's a, it's a one application process. So once you've added the biochar to your soil, you're good to go. You're not going to have to do it again. As far as my understanding of how biochar works and you know the information that I've gathered to this point, that's, that's what I have for you guys. I don't believe it's, that it's something you're going to have to ever add again. So correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below, but from the research that I've gathered, that's, that's the truth. So you guys, um, yeah, if you guys want to check out the benefits of biochar and if you had any, any more questions or anything, feel free to check out Wakefield Biochar. Uh, that's where I picked up my biochar once I found out that they were making some of the best on the market. And uh, yeah, I wish you guys nothing but the best on that. And uh, I'm excited to do another uh, video on biochar as soon as I'm ready to inoculate my beds for you guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll show you guys the whole process of removing the straw mulch, hitting it with some biochar, burying it in real well, mix it in, mix it in thoroughly, and then maybe we'll even hit it with a compost tea. So that'll be a video too for uh, me showing you guys how I like to apply the biochar. Can't wait. It's going to be a good one. See you guys.